is the Sam Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of the Pit Stop, where you, the pit crew, you are the real star today show. Thank you for being here. Good morning to everybody. Happy hump day. Hump day it is. We are working to the weekend. And, uh, you know, I was, this morning I was thinking we have a channel in our Discord chat for the patron group uh, called Coffee and News. And as much as I always like the name, the Pit Stop, I really wonder, should we have just called this show Coffee and Sim News? Because that's what it is. Uh, it's not even the news as much as hanging out with my good friends, having a cup of coffee, and talking about our favorite hobby. I mean, you know, any other hobby I've ever had, I've had this environment because whether it be cycling or soccer or whatever hobby you might pursue, uh, you're, you're, you're doing it in person. You know, you're, you're making these bonds, you're making these friendships, you know. And, and so that you then have these real-life conversations. In the world of the internet, in the world of gaming, in the world of sim racing, a lot of times our, our friends are our acquaintances, you know, and nothing more than that. And I just feel that this show and why I get back to being coffee and news, hanging out with my buddies with a cup of coffee, talking about it, I feel that we have a much more intimate relationship. Intimate may be the wrong word, um, but I, and I really appreciate that. So I really, I do appreciate you guys being here, uh, especially those who can make it live. I know I'm in the you know, you know West Coast United States, and so not everybody can make it live. But I just want to tell you, I really do appreciate you guys hanging out and talking sim racing. Um, I, I see Solo from the UK, so we have some of the UK here. Mm. Sim Contender asked about my stinking shirt. This is the Joa winning meme. You can see it's the Sean Cole trickle shirt. Uh, I love this shirt, by the way. I do love wearing it. And it is starting to smell just a little bit. Um, I've been careful. I'm only using it when I'm live streaming. And I then take it off and put it away. But still, that's enough. And then on top of that, why is my Oculus restarting on its own? What the F is going on over here? I hope that didn't switch any audio properties or do something ridiculous like it could have. Um, but anyway, the the shirt is uh, 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 getting a little ripe. Uh, I did notice when I did a live driving stre stream, I couldn't wear the shirt because it was interfering with the green screen. In this set, it doesn't matter, but on a little more shade on me, and it, and it does. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing I was thinking... <laughs> <laughs> should i give this shirt away after a month would anybody want my stinky old shirt <laughs> that's a disgusting thought i know that one uh streaming girl gave away her bath water i think it was something disgust that's even more disgusting by a long shot so like i said at the beginning of the show thank you for being here thank you for hanging out talking sim racing and uh and being my friends you know it says oh i have friends i'm so lucky i have friends and <laughs> now i do appreciate you guys being here so what is going on in the world of sim racing um <laughs> bath water yes it was she sold it i yeah uh, uh <laughs> and, a, and a lot of people yeah it wasn't just it was a big deal not a little little deal um Anyway, okay, moving on. What's going on? Let's congratulate some winners. Congratulations for crowd. Congratulate. I'm going to have to put my disclaimer. I'm going to get ahead of the game here and disclaim this before we even get going. May Blake Majolis leads Swindell Speed Lab sweep of iRacing World of Outlaws late model podium in Kokomo. Um, these guys, Swindell, these guys have been racking up the win. So there you go. Good job, Blake. Majolis, hope I got that right. In the Lionheart series, which I am, uh, I've had a, just a few no starts now. I'm just, I'm on a bad roll here, but no surprise. Adam Blocker, this guy, someone needs to get Adam Blocker a real life ride. Um, I feel like in America, funny enough, we're not getting the same opportunities to sim racers that you're seeing in Europe because you're seeing guys who aren't even necessarily winning significant things but are known top top sim racers getting opportunities and driving opportunities things like that um adam blocker is the real deal um solo yes that seat add-on will be a nice uh, uh adaption a nice way for somebody to evolve in the serious world you know i don't think of a, a wheel stand as being for the super duper serious but if it's part of your path you know, and you know later you're going to afford or have more space for a rig, then it makes it that much better. Um, 
So, all right, what else? What else do we got? Uh, what else do we have? Let's use some proper English. Uh, this is the trophy for the second place. So now we do have a name, Axel Petit. I still haven't seen the results, funny enough. But I do know that Axel Petit, his first participation in an eSport championship, finished second in that big Assetto Corsa competition at Spa. And look at that beautiful trophy. That is a proper trophy right there. Um, I do not. We do not have a release date. It just still says coming soon. I'll try to get word on that and see if I can get a, 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 a story out of them on that. Um, Chuck, I'm sure a lot of people lend their opinions there. Uh, race Room having a summer sale. So if you are looking to take advantage of Race Room right now, it's going on between yesterday or the day before actually and august 12th also our good buddy jack keatley who he's got a story he's on his way to nurberg ring right now and if you follow jack on facebook you probably know what he's up to but this is one of the greatest sim racers on earth and he has a prize awaiting him in nurberg and he's literally on a train right now on his way there i was just talking to him a little while ago but he threw down the gauntlet on one of the wtcr ascaro and he literally posted Throwing the challenge down on race room. Lap felt so close to perfect. Round one is under three weeks away. Uh, best in sim racing, preparing for the one hot championship, the eSport WTCR, obviously. Anyway, if you would like to, uh, you should follow Jack Keatley uh, on Twitter and uh, stay up on that. You can see exactly how slow you are because this guy, this guy, Jack, is the fastest of the fast. Um... What else? It went from left to right ear. I'm not sure my audio, Tim. I don't often talk about the Forza updates, um, but this one, do you remember when we talked about, we had a whole thing, me and Billy talked about the Lego expansion for Forza Horizon 4 and, and you know, the harsh criticism that it was met with. But anyway, this is one of the barn finds if you have the Lego Speed Champions edition. And that is uh, actually kind of funny. We're going to talk about this car in our very next story. Uh, but that is the Porsche. What is that? A, it's a 930 turbo, correct? Right? Isn't it? I don't know the exact. You'd think I know because I'm pretty much a Porsche fan. But I'm, I'm not exactly knowledgeable when it comes to every single model year and, and all that. I just know I'm a fan. <laughs> um, <laughs> you were buying them at the start-finish line. Twice a lap then, right? Tim? Mm. Dave Blair, race room is great. And, and, and you know, the, the comment there, it needs more people racing it, though, kind of comes back to um, what we talk about. You buy a game, and then what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Uh, Jack's Twitter name is Jack Keatley 44 Jack Keatley 44 uh, He's one of the Williams eSport drivers. A uh, good friend of mine, good friend of the shows. We've interviewed him. He's going to be on very soon to talk about some of his latest, greatest uh, accolades. And absolutely one of the best um, uh, sim racers out there, especially in race room. But he's he's good across the board. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, the, the barn find in uh, LEGO uh, for Forza Horizon 4 Speed Champions. So there was a big update to Gran Turismo GT Sport that just happened. And I don't have this. Yeah, he did cut his hair. Can you believe that? I couldn't believe my eyes. I, I meant to give him a hard time about it. I kind of miss. I, I I like the long hair. Um. Anyway, but gee, we did hear word. Uh, the PlayStation Five is coming. So PS Five is like in the works. They have a date. I don't have it here. Somebody here, out there, I'm sure, read the story. I didn't have it on my radar for sim racing, but it came up on my phone. I just forgot to bring it over here. But yeah, uh, GT. Uh, uh, or the next PlayStation, the PlayStation 5, has a date, and I think pre-orders are even underway. Anyway, uh, the latest update to GT Sport is now available, and this included five new cars, a Jaguar D-Type. Actually, I have photos of those. Some updates to ca campaign mode, open spaces, scape has been added, sport mode, time trial has been added, um, physics simulation model, the car's behavior after running over the curbing during an auto drive rolling start has been addressed, so some issues there, and some other improvements and adjustments as they carry on improving GT Sport. I'm very impressed with the, what they've done to continue. They have the video here. We'll play a little bit of it so we don't get demonetized. Dr. Demonetized! 
Uh, anyway, the Jaguar, look at that car. Oh, man. Actually, we'll go to the photos so we don't get in trouble. That is a beauty of a car. Uh, when I talk about modern cars, we had our discussion about the Corvette the other day, the new mid-engine Corvette. You know, and I, they're just, they're, I almost want to say zero. None come to mind. I could be mistaken. There are zero cars right now that, when I look at them, make me feel any kind of a way. Um, I mean, like when I see a modern Ferrari or Lamborghini, I, and I'm like, oh, I'm in awe of what it can do. But there's nothing about the car that makes me feel any emotion whatsoever. Um, looking at this Honda, this is a 1966. How do you guys feel on this, by the way? Honda S800 from 1966. And what I see when I look at a car like this, and I really mean this, I mean, it kind of goes back to the movie Cars even. I see this car, I see a smiling face. That car is smiling. It's got eyes, it's got a mouth, it's got personality. And I think that cars back then had some heart and soul through the people who made them. And maybe some of that is a little bit lost in today's cars with the perfection on some levels or the robotics on other levels, but it's just not the same. Even, I mean, I, I, even this 98 Honda Civic does more for me. Like, I, I just imagine the car, like, meep, meep, hi, hi, you know. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how you guys feel. But then when we get to this Jaguar, now we're not just talking about a car with personality, but to me, we're talking art. I'm not a huge art fan. I don't have paintings on my walls. That, to me, is art. Um, if I were a wealthy person, I'd hang that on my wall as proudly as I'd put it in a garage, if you know what I mean. Um, anyway, beautiful car being added to GT Sport. Uh, a variation of the Mazda. They're calling it the Roadster Touring Car and 200 class. <clears throat> and then, of course, one of my all-time favorite body shapes. This is the car. I mentioned it just the other day. That is the car that when I was coming of age to cars, this was the car. This was the coolest car that you could have in LA, in my opinion. And I mean, I know people love Ferraris, Lamborghini. That Porsche 930 Turbo with the whale tail. Like, to, if you could understand, I don't know if you guys, young guys, I don't know if you kids understand how fat that car was in its day. And, and I mean P-H-A-T, fat. <laughs> anyway, all right, moving right along. What else? Uh, yeah, so we have more pictures of the cars. Gran Turismo updates underway. A little eye candy for you guys coming out of Rickmo Tech. Love Rickmo Tech. They support the show. I support them. This is their new F4 wheel in action. So you've got your digital display. Not digital. you got your uh, L LCD, LED, LCD display. Built in, you've got button interaction, Max Pappas, uh, formula style rim. Uh, I've been doing that uh, competition. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit later, the, the Codemasters F1 2019 eSport qualifier. And uh, everybody clowns me because I'm using like a, a, a school bus wheel. You know, it's so big that my hand's off the screen. No, um, that's this hand. I have to remember everything's backward from what I see. <laughs> I love those half and half style because that's like sort of one of those uh, use it for anything type wheels. Great article here at Auto Sport. And it's from the mouth of Dom Doohan in terms of him being interviewed. Uh, Josh Subtle. <coughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I do. I have a giant wheel. I need to get a smaller wheel. Um, so... The, anyway, Redline, this is coming from Team Redline, Dom Duhan being the longtime manager of Team Redline. And, and this goes back to something that I'm going to say. So let's read the headline. Drivers will soon need sim racing profiles to help career. Let's read that one more time just to make sure. Uh, yeah, really, Rick Motek, send me that rim, please, please. Uh, was there a price on that wheel? We'll come back to our story. No. Um... I could probably find it. Uh, oh, we had it right there. Brian Heikotter. Yeah, Brian. All right. How much is that wheel? It's not going to be cheap. We know that. We know that. 
Might not even be on their site yet. I'm not seeing it. That is so new. That is so hot that we can't even find it. Oh, look at this. Sorry, I'm distracted. Here we go, here we go. Is this it? Yeah. All right, $879. And this is a purpose-built wheel. This is not a Thrustmaster hub type thing, I don't think. Anyway, okay, moving right along. There you go. Got you your answer. So let's go back to Autosport Redline. Dom Duhan quote. Drivers will soon need drivers will soon need sim racing profiles to help their career. Okay. I've talked about the modding community. I've talked about licensing. And I've talked about like Cadillac paying to be in Forza with that car pack, if you guys remember that from way back when. And for a long time, we've had to pay for licensing in order to have it in-game. And then at some point in time, in certain areas, we see a changing of the tide where instead of us paying for a license, maybe... The license is being given for free in order to help facilitate the content creation. Or maybe they even pay for the content to be produced in order to uh, uh, get it in-game. Again, it's a marketing opportunity. But when we're this small, we're buying licenses. When we're this big... They're giving us licenses. So now I'm going to take that parallel to this article. And I'm not necessarily like Billy says he thinks that statement is a bit optimistic. And I agree. I agree with you. But at some point, perhaps, and it might be a, a young gun thing. You might see as the older drivers retire and the younger drivers keep getting younger, um, that this becomes more relevant than needed like need is the strong word but <clears throat> you got to think at some point right now we're seeing more and more sim racers getting into real life racing we're seeing more real life racers in their free time sim racing like the lando and max verstappen teaming up at spa kind of thing um at some point you could see that be an important part of a driver's profile resume um racing is a cutthroat sport so sure once once you know their name their resume is so built up that they have a good chance of maintaining a career in racing but before you know their names before drivers names are household names let's face it it's a, a marketing game it's a sponsorship game it's a, a bit of talent game but all those other things might be more important than talent even. Well, with that said, how big is your community? How many fans do you have at the ready? And having an online career, an online profile, especially on an esports scale or working with Team Redline in the case of Verstappen and Norris, maybe that exposure or a Nikki theme, um, you know, maybe that fan base is a multiplier when you're selling yourself, looking for sponsors, looking for rides. And it's like, not only do you know my name because I have this resume, but this 100,000 people know my name too because they're all subscribers to my channel. Um, maybe that's part of it as much as the actual driving talent aspect. But the future of racing could also be more interaction with the engineers via sims in-house even you think about a rudy van buren um, being brought onto mclaren to be their sim specialist to prepare the sim prepare the drivers for simulation as that becomes a more integral part of modern racing having a sim racing profile could make you more appealing to a team as well anyway i thought it was an interesting article i love the way in concept, it parallels a lot of things that we're keeping our eyes on in our industry and in the changing of the times. 
being 2019 and everything is different than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you know, whatever. So anyway, great, great article there. Worth the read if you have time at uh, Autosport. Gaming Life, I, this just made me laugh. It was sent in by The Man. Thank you, The Man, for your great stories all the time. Garfield Furious Kart Racing release date announcement. <laughs> so Garfield Racing. So I guess if you have kids and you're looking for a driving title for your kids, I'm assuming... The game will be out on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and Steam on November 5th in the United States, November 7th in Europe. We get a two-day jump on Garfield. <clears throat> Racing in Sims is useful for training, but you still need the nerve in real life. Absolutely, but if you have the nerve, the ability to do it 500 times over in sim um could be you know let's talk about formula one let's talk sims let's talk highest level of sims i've often talked about them not giving us a tool that i'd love to have and you see it in certain things like a uh, uh gran turismo had it in various versions but where instead of hot lapping an entire track they break it down to one spot but just think if you were a, a driver, like I was doing the Codemasters uh, challenge at Hockenheim, and it took me a lot of laps to be able to name nail the timing and the driving style for turn one. If a sim was accurate to an extent, a driver who's struggling with one corner could load up a sim where he's coming across the start finish line at full speed and be able to get the timing of that corner and learn some tricks and repeat it over and over and over again so that the next time they get to that moment, they won't uh, uh, bow toss it into the wall. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I mean, I don't make friends when I start making comments like that. That's for sure. <clears throat> um <laughs> yeah, don't do that. So true. But, you know, the same is uh, true of a go-karter. Uh, you know, go-karters learn really bad skills for real-life racing, real life, for full-bodied racing. And you would have that exact same argument with a go-karter. But at the same time, uh, I wish I had the post. Man, I saw another post, and it was somebody who's running in a sprint car, uh, you know, like a, a little wingless sprint car. And, and he said, you know, I, I do this crossover on iRacing all the time. I wonder if it'll work. And he went on to win his race. And, and he was literally talking about the preparation, the motor memory, the learning that skill of setting someone up so when they push wide, you can undercut them. And, and, and I think that, that you know, they're all relevant. Uh, uh, my main thing, again, when I think of it, and, and I'm – as much as I love sim racing, as much as I can argue for certain aspects of simulation, I still feel that we're a completely different thing, that we don't need to be a real-life racing. I mean, I feel like for so many years, we've we've needed to be real-life racing. And in fact, we don't need to be real-life racing. Bobby Nuts, great question. I, I, I should put, uh, mention this more. No. Uh, this show is Monday and Wednesday, and this is the Pit Stop, and we just talk news. It's just me going through a lot of news and taking little diversions like we've been doing today. And then Friday, my good buddy Billy Strange is here, and we do the Beyond the Sim, and it's a lot more uh, wind tunnel style if you're a fan of wind tunnel, and we literally just sit there and talk uh, in more detail on topics rather than try to rifle through so many, um, which of course I'm getting a little behind on things. We're already at 9.25, and... I'm probably about halfway through my stories for the day. Um, so how many of you guys know Craig Williams? You guys know Craig's setup shop? There is some... I I remember this story from our side of things, not from the Twitch and not from the band side. But, you know, he's, he's doing the setup thing and working with people and, and charging a certain way. And I can't remember the whole story behind it, but he had to change the way he was billing. So then he switched to Twitch and his followers, I think. Anyway... Twitch thought he was cheating his numbers in order to get paid by them and banned him. And it's because what he was doing didn't follow the normal Twitch pattern of how people stream. And, and you know, he was doing something a little bit different. 
So, yep, yep, yep. He got, he, anyway, apparently he got everything worked out. And, uh, uh, but interesting story there about that whole thing that we kind of saw from within the scenes and now it's hit the streamline of DOT Esports is to, who's talking about it. If you like reading about guys who do what we do and live in the life in the next level, um, yeah, iRacing needs to do a lemon series. Wouldn't that be great? Speaking of lemons and people who are doing whatever it takes to get out there and race, man, anything it takes to get out there and race, sim or real life. But <clears throat> Winding Road has an article here on uh, sim racing challenge driver Paul Darling and a guy who sim races and also runs some SCCA uh, stuff as well. Here's a picture of him and his little spec Civic. That's a cool little Civic. I'll tell you what. That is a cool-looking Civic. 25 years old. He's an automotive engineer, um, and he both sim races and real-life races. So you can check that out at Winding Road. Congratulations to Paul on living the life, man. Thrustmaster having some summer deals. I don't know conversion. I was looking at these numbers. I'm like, that doesn't sound like that great a deal. Um, 594 euro down from 699, but I'm not sure if list price is what they were charging for a TGT anymore. Anyway, they're calling it summer deals. You'll have to check it for yourself to find out if it is, in fact, that great of a deal. But virtually all their steering wheels, the handbrake, flight gear, all that on sale through Thrustmaster Europe. This is for Europe only. This is not for us uh, or not for the U.S. We are. We are everything here. Um, <laughs> is that an aspiration? Uh no, it is not. So eSport, uh, MotoGP eSport is also doing a draft. So a look at pro draft contestants from the world selection. 36 gamers from 10 different countries will be participating in the first round of the MotoGP eSport Championship pro draft selection. So I'm not sure if they did this before. I thought it was just everybody, every man for himself last season, if I'm not mistake, mistaken. Um, but so what we're looking at here is, uh, I believe the team's now getting involved and treating it much like what we're seeing from the Codemasters F1 2019 season. Well, 2018 is when they introduced the teams into the aspect, but 10 countries, 36 drivers are going to get drafted on the 15th. I think I read, um, they'd had a whole qualifier. I think we co covered that on the show periodically as it was going on. August 15th through 18th, riders will have to master the cool nighttime condition to secure their place in the MotoGP team. They're going to have a race off. I'm not sure, but if you're into that eSport, you can go check it out. Uh, just letting you know what's going on. Cody's blog talking about the latest patch they had. Uh, I think we covered this on Monday, so I'm not going to go into great detail. But you know there's not a whole lot when the patch notes go only from here to here, and then you move into French, Italian, I'm not even sure they normally do that, give us every language of the patch notes. So, so little to say you got to do it in 20 languages. But anyway, uh, F1 2019 getting patch 1.06 on all platforms. Tire wear, car setups, fixed a crash, fixed a number of instances where trophies, various other stability and bug fixes, and so on and so on. Uh, Grid announcing some of the cars that are coming out for Grid. That's coming up pretty quick now. More cars confirmed and facts. I always call that facts. FAQs answered. Um, we're seeing some VW. That looks like the WTC cars, right? The WTCR cars right there. Latest confirmed cars. Uh, Aston Martin Vantage, Honda Civic Type R Touring, Mazda RX Speed, uh, RX-7 Pan Speed, Mitsubishi Lancer. Subaru Impreza, Subaru WRX, SRT Viper, GTSR, and already confirmed cars. We have a list down there. So you'll find that at Cody's blog if you want to get the whole write up on Grid. Yep, Grid is a coming. It's a coming. <coughs> I have a little cough today, it seems. A little congestion. They cut all the trees down around, not down, they trimmed all the trees on the entire property around me. And it kicked up so much pollen and dust that I've been like like getting headaches midday and coughing. And I'm not even an allergy type guy, but it totally um, 
Brad Morrison, thank you very much for that, saying he always, I get his Twitch Prime. I need to really work on my Twitch presence. Um, I talked to Devin Booth here, and I need to go live more often and do more time, more hours of live streaming. Um, in addition to, I'm really kicking up the reviews and trying to get things caught up so that I can um, continue to uh, do both is what I really, really want to do. So, um, Twinfinite, I never heard of them before got this story, and who would have known, haven't even mentioned this other than talking retro. New Need for Speed game reveal confirmed in the next few weeks by EA. Um, there's a new Need for Speed. Now, I'm not sure if we should be excited. I'm not sure if we should be excited or not. Um, I don't know. What direction have they gone with that title? What direction have they gone with Need for Speed. I don't know. Here's another one. CC Combo Breaker. Possible new name for the new Need for Speed Surface Online. Um, German online show, store showed it. Anyway, uh, Need for Speed No Limits 2019 is what it might be called. And we'll have to keep our eye on that. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not sure if I should get excited. I hope. I hope. Um, it'd be fun. Race Department has a story talking about the FIA Euro Truck Racing Championship. Uh, patch 1 has been released. I need to get that, and I need to update my wheel. I had some problems, but I should be able to play that, and I want to. Um, heat was le was leaked as the name. <laughs> need for money. EA need for money. <laughs> uh, too funny. Too funny. Anyway, I'm going to have to give Euro Truck another try. Automobilist 2, more news dropping tomorrow. Uh, is that today? When is today? That was posted yesterday. Today is tomorrow. I don't have more on that. Um, we are going to have to see, maybe have something to talk about on Friday. Uh, but anyway, uh, big things from Automobilist as they move over to that Madness engine. The Madness engine, which is what is underneath Project Cars 2. And it could be a game changer. I mean, look at the graphics. This is Automobilista you're looking at here in this image. Uh, that does not look like Automobilista in a an R-Factor format. Uh, today is tomorrow. Do we have news? <laughs> um, here, here you go, uh, Billy. Five important improvements for NASCAR Heat 4 from the sports desk. Uh, I didn't read it even. I just thought it made multiple racing lines running with the pack dirt track origins. Hey, heat three. That's what it was missing was some, some bad physics, dirt track racing, uh, better AI behavior means better racing and changes not made next stage in your career. Anyway, uh, is that make you <laughs> only five? Billy says, does that make you Billy? Does that make you? optimistic out there for heat four nascar heat four is that going to be a is five improvements enough to make you want it sorry guys i just call it like it's easy. i didn't even play it i just went on billy's word all right what else what else uh trucks am i gonna have to try to find uh automobilistas twitter page real quick We are coming up to news time again. This was posted 21 hours ago. Uh, the Riza July development update is in the works. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. That is today. Um, development update. Wait. That's at vSIM. Nope. Nope. They don't have it. Um, nope. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. There you go. We'll have to tune in on uh, Friday. <laughs> Search history. Was it bad? I don't use this for anything. Uh, Reddit. And so it begins. Oh, Reddit. Now, when we get to Reddit, we're talking about just looking at some people's rigs just for motivation for all you guys out there. I don't know. Every once in a while. I mean, that's why I did my platform build was just to give you guys idea. Maybe it's just one little thing. Maybe you have a death mobile and you're like, hey, some triangles to close in my two by fours would at least make it look pro. So anyway, this one's posted here by Spaceship 
receptacle <laughs> on his uh, version of a death mobile. Looks like an adaption from like an. Not sure what that seat is. It looks too skinny to be a real seat. Like it had to have been off of a different sim rig at some point in time. Um, yeah, still 11 hours left, and yep, they have time. Then check this one out. I'm not even sure. Is this actually welded? I mean, it looks like a welded rig. I think this guy literally welded a rig and made it look like a roll bar. I applaud you on that completely. This posted by uh, Alfie1371. And uh, nice looking setup there. I do like that. I, if I had a welder and the tubing, I would do that for sure. So, yeah, Billy, we'll have to keep our eyes open for Friday's show for the update. This guy's got that ideal R seat set up. He's got the F1 cockpit with all the add-ons, it looks like, and the R seat stand with just beautiful monitors. I'm loving the way that looks right there, all in white, posted by Zach Dav. Well done there. And then what else do we have? To, I only have a few more things to talk about. Um, oh, yeah, so I think I might go live again today. So here is me giving a go at the Grosjean Challenge. There's still three days or two days left on this one in F1 Esports Series. You know, they're doing this whole qualifying thing, and I just want to see what they're doing because I think it's an odd format to, A, be doing qualifiers for next year's draft now when this year's season is just getting underway. So at least leave that for later. Um, and then the other is that they're doing these challenges, not straight up hot lapping or racing, which is interesting because you score points based on how many driving aids or the level of the AI and your driver performance, all those combined for your ultimate score. But then you have to meet the minimum requirement of finishing sixth. Sixth. So this is the stream that people are making fun of me because I'm using a, a, a wheel this big. And, yeah, you have to ram your teammate and blame them and wait for team orders to sort it out, right? So, anyway, you can check out this stream. Uh, I did that on Monday. If you want to see where I was, I got up to, like, 900th in the world. Not very impressed with that, by the way. I am going to have to give it another go. So, I think today I might give it another go. And uh, 11 out of 10, <laughs> the nerve. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, what else? I just I like to let you guys know where you can go race with uh, either me or um, where you can go race with other parts of our community, guys who, who are part of the viewers, part of the pit crew, watching the show, talking, chiming, part of the patron group, all those guys. But we have the Sim Pit series, the Pick Your Poison series on SRS, Sim Racing Systems. This is running Assetto Corsa, old school, Assetto Corsa. And this week they're going to be at Watkins Glen. That's tomorrow. Um, I, yeah, and I'm going to go back for more, Billy. I'm going to actually go back for more. So, uh, I had a little bit of fun with the challenge. A little bit, a little bit. I just want to, I like leaderboards, and that's the epitome of a leaderboard. If, if the winning prize is a shot at that draft, then it's going to bring out the best of the best. And that's why I feel like I'm in that, a 90, 900th was like the top 33%. So, 66% of the world is slower than me. But I still have 33% of the world better than me. I need to do better. So anyway, tomorrow night, Sim Racing Systems will be running at, uh, where are we? Watkins Glen, that's right. One hour, uh, one day, eight hours from now. And you should run that if you're looking for some racing on a Thursday night in Assetto Corsa. Now, Friday night, I've, I've mentioned this a couple times. An email has gone out to everybody who's part of our patron group. I posted on our Discord channel so all you guys know. I sent an email out to the entire truck oval series. Forgive me if you don't like dirt racing, all you truckies. But lots of people have been notified about this series. And I'm, I'm telling all you guys right now, Friday night is sort of do or die whether we're going to do a Pro 4 off-road dirt season. If we get enough attendance, we're going to give it a whole season. If we don't, then I'm going to scrub it, keep my time free for other things, and keep reviewing and driving selfishly. But I love the idea. So Friday night, I'd like to do give it a trial. Friday night... At 5 o'clock, uh, the room will open up on iRacing Hosted. Actually, at 5.30, I believe. And I'm going to give out the password right now. Um, just because if you're watching, you know, the 100 of us watching live, the 500 to 1,000 people who will see this sh this show. Friday night, 5 o'clock, 5.30 Pacific Time. Sim Pit Truck Series in the dirt. We're going to be at Wild West Motorsport. Or, no, Wild Horse, the one that bucks you. Wild Horse Motorsport Park. 
and we're going to do heat racing, inverted grids, and then a main. It should be fun, but we need attendance so that we can push that series. So lots of people have been notified. iRacing hosted section. Uh, if you're part of the patron group, you got the email that has all the details. I will be streaming Friday night's race as well. So come race with us. It'll be a lot of fun. If you have any questions about it, just send me an email. Send me an email. Sean, S-H-A-U-N at simpit.com. I'll make sure you're all lined up, ready to go. Also, Sunday, and this is going to be for the patrons first, which means I sent out an email and I posted in our Discord channel. Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we are going to run our first Assetto Corsa Competizione um, multiplayer race. So all the patrons are going to join me 10 a.m. Sunday. And during the stream, I will give out the password so that non-patrons can join and fill up the room. Once we get all of our regulars in, I'll open it up for everybody. So that's going to be Sunday at 10 o'clock. Anyway, just want to let you guys know everything we have going on behind the scenes over here. Be sure to join us. Uh, I'll be back on the air at some point today, do another run at that F1 2019. Also, finally finishing up. It's in editing. It'll be done today as well. The Ferrari headphone review. So a lot of people have been asking about that, and that will be coming out uh, tonight, tomorrow morning, somewhere in that, that ballpark. So lots going on. Really pushing things here at the Sim Pit, trying to make sure we keep you entertained, grow the community, and just keep getting more and more cool content for you guys. Thank you for being here. Like I said at the beginning, I really enjoy these shows. I really enjoy doing them. I enjoy hanging out with my friends, having a cup of coffee, talking sim racing, getting psyched up to get out on track and do some racing, and it makes me pumped up. Perfect way to spend a Wednesday hump day as we head into August. That's going to do it for this one. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down, tell a friend, whatever you got to do to spread the word. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.